I'm not a phone gamer at all, but this is the GameSir G8 Galileo. And this is a controller for your phone. Now I've, I've never been a phone gamer, like pretty much ever. It's just not my thing. I've always been a handheld gamer, you know? However, with the release of the Steam Deck, I then started delving into like streaming video games, you know, from my Xbox Remote Play or my PlayStation 5, that kind of thing. And even from Steam, so from my other PC to my Steam Deck. And that kind of like opened my mind up a bit of being like, actually, okay, maybe this is the future at some point. And of course, what does everyone have? They've got a phone and you can stream to phones. However, the one thing I hated about remote play to phones was the fact that, yeah, like on screen touch screens was rubbish. It's absolutely awful. Give me a controller any day. And that's where this comes in. So the Galileo just here, the G8, is that solution. No longer do you need to use the touchscreen. You can have an actual controller. And again, I was thinking, well, surely they, they can't be that good. It's for a phone, right? <laughs> I was wrong. So going over what it's got, we've got Hall Effect sensing joysticks and analog Hall Effect triggers as well. We've got plug and play with the USB-C connector. We've got ultra low latency install with ease. More on that in a minute. <laughs> Responsive membrane buttons. Uh, as I said about the triggers, we've got a tactile D-pad. We've got a charging port and a 3.5 millimeter pass-through port and two mappable back buttons and laser engraved texture grips. So let's just see what we've got here. Now I have been using this for a little while, but I wanted to show you the box and the pack Packaging and what we get inside it because this is what I love ready ha ah, like this just looks amazing I really like the presentation the packaging is awesome inside here we just get the manuals and other rubbish that we don't need we've got some protections over the joysticks I always appreciate that with packaging just in case you know we've got the thing itself more on that in a second. And then we've got these, which is one of the main things that I absolutely love about this. And that is changeable joystick caps. I do a lot of controller reviews. And one thing that really gets me, you can have an amazing controller. And if the thumbsticks suck, then it sucks. But this has really good thumbsticks. So that's all we get inside the box. Literally just this. You don't need to charge this. This is powered by your phone. The first thing I want to show you is this. Like the actual thing. <laughs> of course, this is the Galileo. But I'm just going to skip over everything and show you this straight away. And the only thing is, is it's a little bit annoying to get off. But you can get the face plates off and remove the joystick cap. So the face plates are just magnetized on. So you just kind of pop it on like that. And then you just get your fingers over whatever you can and open it up and then that reveals this first of all i love that i mean <laughs> i would love to use this just looking like this it looks freaking awesome like i really like the transparent design but you know you could use it like that but then the gate of the joystick throw is huge whereas of course with this you've got an anti-friction ring just around there as well on the back of this faceplate so you can open this up and then change the joysticks and the same goes for the other side as well let's see if i can get this off there we go just like that so I mean, that looks pretty cool. New colorway, maybe, uh, game, sir? <laughs> but yeah, so you can just take these off. Now, I've actually been rocking the GameCube-inspired one on my left side, which I really like, which is really cool. It's, like, domed, you know, as opposed to the one that comes on it, which is, like, a more traditional one. And then, on the right side, what I've been doing has been using the nubbin, because I absolutely love the nubbin. Anytime a controller gives me the nub, I love it. So, there we go. We've got tiny little nub just here, and then we've got the big one over there. And I find, personally, that I just feel like I get more accuracy with the nub like i genuinely find that just kind of getting the tip of my thumb on there gives me like way more precision than trying to push around like a massive cap like look at the size of that like i just find that gets in the way for me personally and because this is actually rubber and that is really grippy like you're not falling off of that whatsoever i love that like i massively love that and i really like the fact that they've given you different ones and that's not all because they've also given you an extended height one as well so it's basically the same as the other others just here but if I flip it sideways you can see it's extended in height so you would use this on the right stick and that would give you greater range of motion and actually give you greater accuracy because there's there's more movement so there's more accuracy so first of all massive props to game surfer doing that love that i was not expecting that from this at all whatsoever next of all let's just look at the thing like wow 
Like, this thing looks amazing. I've got some uh, Nintendo vibes going on here with the gray and the, uh, the like SNES kind of buttons here. Really like that. The build quality of this thing is ridiculous. Like, <laughs> I was not expecting this to feel so good. This is super smooth and supple rubber like that's what your phone's going to be laying up against and the same with the clamps on the edges like this is obviously telescopic right hence Galileo but it's really good like this is just feels so premium I can't get over how premium it feels it's way nicer feeling than I actually expected I, I don't know why I'm sorry game sir I don't I'm not saying that your products aren't good but this is amazing now just to go over everything we've got our sort of start button up there we've got our face buttons on here we've got our joystick we've got the game sir like home button and then we've got like a macro button we've got a screenshot button we've got a d-pad we've got the other stick we've got the sort of select button we've got Hall effect analog joysticks just here. We've got our shoulder buttons as well. And then we've got the macro buttons on the back as well. Now the face buttons themselves feel really nice. Like that a lot, all consistent. The D-pad's actually fairly good. It's actually quite nice. It's better than a lot of the Joy-Con alternatives that I end up reviewing. So that's a pro. The bumpers here are really nice. They actuate immediately. There's no like pre or post travel. The triggers are lovely, analog again. Back paddles are nicely spaced as well. And the ergonomics of this thing are excellent. So it fits like an actual controller, you know? This just fits really nicely into your hands. Like it a lot. The only thing I would say is the right stick, I wouldn't have minded being like a bit further up and to the left, just because I kind of have to kind of give a bit of a looser grip to get down to it. You know, it's, it's fine, but if I want to hold it so that the, the controller is completely in my palms, my thumb wants to naturally rest like over here just a little bit higher than there so I have to sort of like change my grip a little bit and hold it a bit lower but because it's horned you can do that it's not it's not an issue at all so that's the kind of like overview of the controller right really like it actually impressed love the colorway love the changeable joystick caps love the buttons everything feels really nice now we're on to actually putting the phone into it. Now this is kind of annoying because you can only use a phone that's USB-C for a start. So you can use the iPhone 15 and basically any other USB-C phone, but there are some exclusions. Now the USB-C is in here and I love what they've done with it. I mean, I don't know if my camera wants to focus, but there we go. It's fully movable up and down. Love that because I was really worried about snapping or damaging my USB-C connector in my phone. And this is so free and movable. You know, it only goes up and down, doesn't go left and right, so you still gotta be careful. But it is so movable, I'm actually digging that quite a lot. But there's a bit of an issue, which is you can't use a case. <laughs> so you can only use your case if it's one millimeter thick or less, those like really thin transparent ones. Now for me, I've got the Google Pixel 8 Pro just here. And well, I'm using a mouse case, which is a really thick, like heavy protection case, and I can't use it. And one thing I hate doing is not having my case on. <laughs> I do not like taking my case on and off. Once it's on, that's it. I, I'm down done. Maybe I'll take it off once a year and clean it, but that's it. Like I do, I don't want to take it off. I much prefer phones without their case, but I'm too clumsy. I'll probably break it. <laughs> so, you know, that's a kind of annoyance. I wish that it could account for bigger phone cases. I mean, all that they would need to have done is made a longer USB-C and maybe a bit more extension on this, even though this is massive maybe that's all they could have done and then it would have been fine so okay what you've got to do is open this up now it does account for big camera bumps i can't remember exactly how much they said something like five millimeters or something and well the google pixel 8 pro just here has a really large camera bump so yeah so to put this in what we need to do is kind of jam the the thing open now i've got a broken finger which is not easy so i'm gonna have to kind of do this cripple hand so i can then try and find the usb-c and kind of lay it down like so. Now, when I first used this, I was like, how do I turn it on? Do I have to charge it? Like, what do I do? Like, I, I didn't understand because I put the phone in and nothing happened. And I was like, what? Literally, I took like half an hour. Couldn't, couldn't understand what I had to do. And it's because the USB-C was not actually seating fully in. So you have to put it in and then like squish it together so that the USB-C goes in. And 
didn't feel that comfortable doing that, like to be perfectly honest. But you know, once it's in there, it's fine. And to be fair as well, every time after that, it was absolutely fine. It was that first time, maybe the USB-C was like a, a bit stiff or something, I don't know. But once it's in, it will then light up. It's powered by your phone. You can charge it with the USB-C just there. Some phones, I believe, don't support this, but mine did. I've got USB, uh, sorry, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack just here so that you can have good audio as well. And yeah, there we go. That's what it looks like in, like this. Really like the feel, fits great. You can see that kind of camera bump just there as well. And it fits no problem. It's not even touching the back. Now there is a bit of wiggle on this. But when you're playing with it, you don't really notice it, to be perfectly honest. And I really like how protected this feels. That rubber is really, really nice. Now, this does have three different modes as well. So I really like the fact that you can play anything on this. So you can see with this, I've got a blue light just here. So this is actually in like PlayStation mode. So if you're using PS5 remote play, then you put it in the blue mode, right? And you change that by holding the sort of start and select button at the same time. Then on green mode, that's for anything that needs a controller. So a phone game that can be played with a controller or like Xbox Game Pass, for example, that's what that's for. And then if you do it again, then this goes to white. And then that is actually for or like mobile phone touchscreen games. So it will actually like convert the controls for touchscreen games. So instead of using on-screen controls, you can still use this even if the game doesn't support it. Pretty mad. I must admit, I haven't tested that because I don't phone game. I didn't really want to download some random games and start like trying that out. I'd rather stick to streaming games because that's what I'm about. We've got a screenshot button there and we've got a macro button. Now we do have turbo. Love this. I cover it a lot on other controllers. So with turbo, what you do is you press macro, press the macro button and then the button of your choice. And then it will just auto fire that button for you to save you having to mash that button. Really, really like that. You can also map the back paddles as well by holding the macro button down and the button that you want to assign and then you can just press whatever button and it will assign it to that back paddle really like that as well there's another shortcut you can also do which is changing the analog hall effect sensing triggers to uh what do they call it like hair trigger mode so instead of like revving a car where you you push it gently and it will do like a small throttle and then you pull it down to go full throttle you can change it to just hair trigger mode so even if you just tap it like gently it's full on you know as if you've turned it into a digital like trigger and this could be useful for like shooting games now there is the game sir app as well on this so you can go over to the game sir app just here and you can go to devices and then you can do firmware upgrade you can calibrate now so you can calibrate all the different stuff you've got gamepad test as well so you can actually test all the inputs and even change like dead zone see what where the uh, sticks realigning to and all that kind of stuff there's so much stuff you can do here including like xbox playstation remote play and game pass settings and all that good stuff straight from the app as well which i think is awesome again the app's free as well so you can just go onto the app store and just download it now of course this is not related to game sir so this is not game sir's issue at all but internet right like i was streaming games so i i was trying to play call of duty modern warfare 3 and it's just not it's not working for me <laughs> you know the internet wasn't stable enough i suppose and also i don't like the black bars on my phone the, the screen gets even smaller again because the black bars are on either side made it incredibly difficult for me to see and then with the jutters and stutters and jitters and blah blah, blah from like internet issues it was just kind of annoying like personally I think this is way more suited to those of you that have got a really stable internet connection and maybe like a bigger phone screen. I don't know, like who knows? <laughs> or maybe you're just somebody that absolutely loves phone gaming and you just use apps like phone game apps that do not require the internet. This would be absolutely fantastic. Like this, bam. And then this is now tiny and it's, it's small again. And this is a lot smaller than say a Steam Deck or any of the other handheld style things. So yeah, I mean, as a product, really like this. The build quality is fantastic. And game, sir, if you are watching, then this, why don't you make this into a Nintendo Switch Joy-Con alternative? Imagine having this, this exact thing, but like a dockable Nintendo Switch style thing, you know, like do it. 
make that. That would be insane. But there we have it. That is the game, sir. G8 Galileo. Let me know, are you a phone gamer or are you like me and you tend to not? <laughs> Let me know down in the comments. Let me know what you thought of this. And uh, whilst you're down there, like this video, subscribe. We've got memberships open, and if you become a member on any tier, then you can see these videos early as well. Check out mine and AJ's podcast where we talk about all things gaming, and check out another video from me down here. Thanks for watching. Bye.